All right, well, hello everybody, uh, Kyle here. So, I am finally going to do the uh, how-to on installing Mac OS X on your PC. Uh, now, one thing to note, first off, this is not exactly an easy task, uh, and this is not something for you to do if you don't know much about computers, because you can potentially screw things up. You're messing with hard drives, you're, you know, you're just messing with all sorts of settings, so if something goes wrong, I am not held to rely at all, not held accountable, anything. This is a do-at-your-own-risk project. So, first off, to address some questions I've got. First, like I said in the other video, I'm using the TOH AMD Cracked version. You can find that, just search for it. Second off, you need to have at least an SSE2 processor. SSE3 is preferred. Uh, the Darwin bootloader comes on the installation CD. So you don't need to worry about downloading it separate. The only thing you need to download separate from that is Gparted, which is the partitioning utility that I use. Now, first we're going to go ahead and go through Gparted since that's essentially the first step. Uh, I personally recommend that you use a separate hard drive, but if you're on a laptop, that could be hard, I understand. So, one thing to note though, if you're attempting dual boot and you have a version of Windows on the computer you're doing this on, if something gets erased, that is at your own risk, once again. There is the potential for that, but hopefully that won't happen. So. First off, we're going to go ahead and do Jeep. Alright, so, first step is to boot the Gparted Live CD. That you can download from Gparted website. Uh, it's just an ISO, a little 50 megabyte download, burn it to a regular disk. It is live boot into a Linux system, so if you're not familiar with Linux, that's alright because this is a fairly straightforward operation. So, I'm going to select the first option out of the ones it gives you. Let's go ahead and hit enter for the default uh, key map, which is the QWERTY, unless you know that you are using a different form of keyboard. And then, just English key map, and enter again. And then it's going to go ahead and load everything. All right, now it is probably just going to take up the top left corner of your screen. That's normal. Why? I don't know. But it's going to go ahead and scan your drives now. All right, so. Now it's gone ahead and gotten the drives loaded. First, you make sure you've got the correct hard drive selected. In this case, I only have the one in there because I've actually got my other hard drive disconnected. But it'll give a list of all your different hard drives. Make sure it's selected. Select the partition you want, and then you'd go ahead and, assuming it's the entire drive, there should only be one partition. If there's multiples, erase them all. 
and then turn it, turn it into the one if you want to use the entire drive. If you're just wanting to use a partition, which like I say I do not recommend because I do not know what it will do to the Windows loader, especially if you eventually remove it, I don't know, but if you want to, that's your thing. You select your partition, you're going to go ahead and delete it. I'm not, I'm not going to do it because I don't feel like erasing my partition. So, delete it, you apply it, which is up here, this will light up, apply the operation. Now once that's done, that'll erase the partition or partitions. You then select the unallocated space and format it as unformatted, at least I believe that's what it is. When you select it, it'll pop up with a window here, and it'll be the bottom option. It'll say something to the effect of unformatted. And then once that's done, once again you hit apply. Anytime that the screen says apply, always do it. And then you'll go ahead and do here, and you're going to go to manage flags. And then you're going to put a boot flag on it. You're going to put a check mark and boot and hit close. Now once you're all done, that's pretty much all there is to it. That gets the drive ready. So once you're done, and once you make sure if there's apply, hit it. Go to G parted, and then quit. Go ahead and hit your power button up here in the corner. And then you'll go ahead and select reboot. Hit OK. It'll go through its shutdown process. And then this is where I go into my boot menu, so that way I have time to change CDs. In my case, it's hitting F11. I don't know what it'll be on your board. Each board's different. In this case, you'll select CD-ROM. Okay, go ahead and change that to discs. Now, once your OSX DVD is in the drive, you go ahead and select your CD-ROM. It'll continue to boot. Go ahead and hit Enter. This is the Darwin loader, by the way. This is off of the drive or off of this off the CD. And this is when it goes into Unix. This is actually loading things off the disk. This will take a very long time. I kid you not. It takes a long time off the disk. So there's going to be times where it's going to look like it is not responding. That is fine. Because it is going to take a long time. So I'm actually not going to record this entire process. Alright, and then a couple things to note here. In this process where it's booting into the Unix system, this is where I ran into serious problems, okay? First off, if you have multiple CD-ROMs, I guess either make sure there's a disk in it, in all of them, or unplug them, and that includes the IDE and the Molex power, just so that way they are not active at all. You don't have to unplug the cable from the board, just plug it from the back of the drive. 